I've been wanting to talk to you folks about your hygiene. I know I get never <laughs> Alright, we'll bust through this panel. Let's, let's do a lightning round. Come on. Questions. Ready? Go. Bam. Can you give us an example of a Jason David uh, Frank Frank? No. Next. <laughs> your first car. My first car? 1968 Mercury Cougar named Marilyn. Nobody can open it but me. <laughs> Driver at a dealership in the Thousand Oaks, California. Next! Yes! What did you make your last Power Rangers paycheck on? My last Power Rangers paycheck. Oh, hang on, let me think about that. Rent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Your opinion, hottest Power Ranger? Uh, hottest Power Ranger? Yeah. Uh, he's not even David Yost. David Yost is like a good looking dude, man. He's like all chill. He's like, hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, Captain Sutherland, I guess. Nikia like, Maurice is gorgeous. Uh, they're all pretty beautiful. They're prettier than me. That's for damn sure. Uh, Patty, she's the uh, Steve Cartinez. <laughs> 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 Next. Favorite Tennessee Williams play. Oh, you know I've become a sucker again for for uh, for streetcar named Desire, but of course because you know I'm a, I'm a fan of the early Brando. When you watch, when you guys like. You know how you watch old movies, and you watch old movies and they're doing old movie acting? Say, don't you see, see? I love you, don't you understand? But Johnny, how can you love me? I have so many problems here. That's okay, Tons, you come with me. But every once in a while you watch an old movie star, and you'll be like, holy shit, they're really good. They could be acting today, and they would look like a modern actor. You know what I'm talking about? Marlon Brando in Streetcar is one of those guys. Brando is one of those guys, I gotta tell you too. Uh, so I guess I'm a streetcar fan right now. Although, although I did one called the Ganadica Scroll Line a few years ago. Uh, Ganadica Scroll Line is about two old ladies who sit on the front porch in swings because it seems to be some kind of sexual stimulant to them, uh, smoking pot all the time. And I played a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Indian named Indian Joe, and I came out in red underwear. And all was, my only line was, POW! Oh! Yeah, Lake Tennessee Williams is some weird shit. Okay, next, yes. Favorite weapon? Favorite weapon, real or imaginary? Real, no, no guns. No guns. Favorite stats, full arms, whatever. Oh, oh, uh, my favorite style is certainly rapier and dagger. That's for sure. That's my favorite style of fighting. I will say that straight up. So next, yes. How would you prep yourself for um, the world? I'm just being honest, but how would you prep yourself? For for playing Scully, me. Um, uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, first of all, uh. Okay, this sounds ridiculous, okay? Uh, Paul and I talk about being technical actors. Uh, you know what a uh, technical actor would be? In other words, you plan, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, and then you do it. Boom, 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 and boom. But I have just come from the Strasbourg School. Okay, Lee Strasberg School is uh, a derivative of Stanislavski, blah, 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 blah. In other words, it's the kind of thing where you have to emote and feel everything. Doesn't <laughs> 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 quite work for a skull, does it? But what it does do is it, it teaches you to uh, relax your body so that when, way when you want to react naturally and organically, you can do that. So I would do Stanislavski, uh, uh, Strasberg warm ups occasionally. They, the breathing and all that stupid stuff, and you do this one thing, you have to get tension out of your body, so you relax your whole body, and when you find tension in your body, you go, you move it, and if it doesn't move, then you breathe, and if it doesn't work, then you make a noise, and then like, when I was in class, I saw some people that were like really angry, and so I started doing the same thing that the angry people would be, which would be to swear, like, it, kill them all, I would do that too. Uh, when, I actually, when I had to do Skull again a couple years ago, that was weird to me. Because I realized, again, I told you I realized I was old. <laughs> uh, I still moved the same way, but I was different. I'm a different body style than I was. I mean, I weighed, you know, a buck 20 back then, and I weigh a buck 65 or 70 now. You know, so I had, I, I had, and I also, people always ask me, can you do the Skull Lab? For first Morphicon, I had to reteach myself how to do that. Which is, it is a derivative of the Amadeus lab, for anyone who doesn't know that. <laughs> you know, um, I can't quite do it anymore, because over the past few years I've been doing Shakespeare, and you can't be doing Shakespeare like this, to me or not to me, and that's a question. <laughs> but it's just no one of mine to summon the slings and arrows about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was going to see a drum by opposing end. Yeah, end them. Um, so, you know, I had to do the long, you know, deep 
Oh, it's true, true, solid flesh. So I have it actually for, I only really had about a month or a month and a half to prepare. I had to reteach myself to talk in the upper register like Skull did. And then I, I think it was two months, and then I like changed my workout where I wouldn't work with weights. I would do like jogging to try to get slim like Skull again. But that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> lessons, uh, but I also did Sabre for a very short time. This was really funny. When we were in Australia, we had so much time to kill. I actually started taking fencing lessons with this guy named Angelo Sant'Angelo. And he was one of these things, okay, here's your sword. No, hit me. regular straight-up stage combat. And it was hard to go from um, stage combat to regular fencing. Regular fencing, just so you know, small, you keep everything, you know, so that way you have small targets and get, anytime you fight, this is for any fighting, you fight, um, the further out of the way you go, you do two things. You throw yourself off balance. You also open yourself up so the other people know that you're going to punch it. If I come up to you, and I'm like, hey, how's it going, dude? Good! You know I'm going to punch you in the head. Yeah. So, you know, you really want to, as Johnny Bosch would say, you always do something small. Bam! You know, straight up. Fencing is the same way. But when you do stage combat, you guys got to be able to follow what I'm doing. I mean, if I came up to her and went, ah! You wouldn't have seen what happened. Okay? <laughs> On film, they can slow it down. They take it from four or five different angles. That, that's why in film you'll see something happen five times. I'll be like, you know, the first time I'm like, Psh! And then it'll be like, Psh! And then you'll see, and the music will be like dun, 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 dun. So when I, when I do stage combat, they teach you you have to be big so people know I'm gonna punch I'm gonna punch this guy. Okay. But of course the fence I'm like, and they're like, you're dead. You're freaking dead. So it was hard to go back and forth. So that's why I like getting into the rapier and dagger, because at least you have that extra dagger that you the small stuff. So I was never good at like attacking. I just could keep myself from getting killed. Yes! Bothering. Oh, Bothering, bothering, swords. Oh, yeah, but I, we did it in high school. Cause you, know, bah, 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 bah. you know what I did learn that's really cool? Uh, I did a production of Romeo and Juliet last year that I directed um, at Concordia University in Chicago. And I wanted my students to know an old form. I, I said it in 1920s, 30s, uh, New Orleans, late 20s, New Orleans. So I wanted them to have a street style of fighting that was more modern, but I didn't want to do just sword canes. It looks stupid. It looks like someone said, I know fencing. I don't know how people really fight, so I'll do sword canes. <laughs> so I had them have sword canes, but I also taught them, uh, I had them all go to the Bartitsu Institute in uh, Chicago. For those of you who are not familiar with Bartitsu, this is the style that they used in the new Sherlock Holmes films, where everything that you have with you in your, that you're holding, wearing, is a weapon, you know. You take your hat, you blind the guy, and then attack him with your walking cane, because everybody back then had walking canes that were civilized. Uh, so I did Bartizu. That's really cool stuff. That's cool stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, style. What is that? Yeah, style. Um, yeah he, he does some kind of stuff, but it's not really Bartizu. Mm, but yeah, I love that Jackie Chan stuff. Next. What's your favorite Megazord? I don't have a favorite. I'm Vulcan! Vulcan Skull! We don't care about Megazords! <laughs> I honestly would not know a Megazord if it kicked me in the face except for the original one. So I'll say the original one. Uh, what got you into uh, education as a professor? Say it again. What, what, what got you into education as a professor? What got me into education? My degree. No. Um, <laughs> you know when you're an actor? Because um, we always took our acting seriously, and I won't bore you with all the details. Uh, but you kind of figure there's, at some point, there's only so much you can do as an actor. That's not entirely true, okay? But uh, you do feel that you want more and more challenges. Um, and at some point, some people that are actors want to, to go into directing, right? Um, I had the impetus that I wanted, I felt 
I felt personally the need at some point to give back to the art by teaching people how to do it. That's kind of how I got into it. But again, I quit Power Rangers to go to college. I felt that I was becoming a bit of a, uh, a dick, quite frankly, in my personal life. Um, there was a little bit of sort of, we did, I remember what somebody when we were doing Power Rangers said, you'll never do anything as big as this. That's the truth. And so that kind of haunts you. And you say, well, what next? You know, it's hard to go to the audition for man number three when you've you know, been on a, a hit show, quite frankly. So um, I ran away to go to college. And I always thought I'd go back to acting. I thought I was taking a break. But while I was at college, um, I went to Franklin and Marshall College. I really loved the intellectual life. It was challenging. It was artistically fulfilling. I loved being in a room full of people and just throwing ideas at each other until four in the morning. I mean, to me, that was amazing. You know, if I could perpetuate that for the rest of my life, for God's sake, sign me up. Um, and then I realized, and at one point I thought I was going to be a history professor, uh, but then I realized, uh, I've done this for so damn long, um, I shouldn't leave that behind, that would be kind of stupid. So, good question. Yeah. You recommended an album, a book, and a film. Ooh, an album, a book, and a film. Ooh, 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 That's a tough one. People always ask me those things in lightning rounds. I'm like, oh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, 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 well, let me get back to you on that one. Album, book, and film. Uh, okay, I'll have to come back, otherwise we'll slow it down. Yeah. Any ranger you could be, which one? Say again? Any ranger. Which I could be? Yeah. Which one? Which one? Uh, the, uh, mm, I'm, uh, terrible. Black ranger. Yes, thank you. Black ranger. I would be <laughs> Walter Jones. Next. <laughs> uh, favorite Shakespeare play that you performed in? That I performed in? Uh, what did you say was your best performance? You know, I, I, <sighs> Winter's Tale, I think. Winter scale. Uh, I, I mean, all, all the Shakespeare's that I've done, I like to revisit. I like to revisit Hamlet. I thought, man, 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 you know, Hamlet will never get right. Winter's Tale. For those of you not familiar with the Winter's Tale, it is the most beautiful of all the Shakespeare's. Not because of the language, because he wrote it. It's his penultimate play. First of all, it's the only time you can use penultimate in a sentence and use the only correct word. Okay. <laughs> uh, he was also a mature adult at that point in his life, and it, the first half of the play takes place with a king who is. Um, I think he's, tw uh, I know for a fact he's 28, I was 28 when I did it, um, who is insanely jealous about his pregnant wife and his best friend, who's another king, accuses his wife of having cheated on him, and that's how she got pregnant, um, only to recant that instantly, but she dies in childbirth. So for the rest of his life, he has to repent for this horrible um, sin that we all have. We all can be jealous people. Who in this room has never been jealous ever? Liar! But that's the thing. He does something that we all could have done. Um, and I, to me, that was just such a powerful show. And in the last half of the play, he's 16 years older and has to deal with that and try to come to a mention. And I love doing that one. So, great question. Next! Next! If you could work with any actor or actress, who would you work with? Paul Schreier. Next! Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a prank between you and Paul that maybe uh, went a little too far? Is there a prank between us? Uh, yeah, they all go too far. I mean, that's the way it's up. I mean, psh. <laughs> this was one of those, hey, you know, this is this is the minimum of what happens. <laughs> they all go too far, I promise. <laughs> Destruction usually ensues, and fortunately, we have not been arrested. Next! <laughs> yes? How did the audition go for the whole time? I've told the story a lot, so if anybody's recording this or putting it on YouTube, press stop because people will be bored of hearing it. Um, what happened was, I got a call, um, I, I said I was a four parts driver, I got a call um, while I was out on a run, and they said, you gotta go to this audition. So I just took my leather jacket and went straight there. Grease, leather jacket, I looked like a derelict, okay? Uh, they didn't have time really to, to email, uh, not email, oh my god, <laughs> We had a thing called fax, <laughs> or carrier pigeon. Uh, I didn't think I had time to look at those, uh, so I ran right down there. But they, they really didn't know what they wanted to do with skulls, so they asked me to improvise. And Paulie and I were always good at improvising. Uh, and at that point, I was so sick of the industry. I've only been doing it for like seven months at that point, you know, but when you're 18, seven months is a long time. Uh, so I'm like, I'm going to be a prick. <laughs> they're not going to give me the role anyway. You know, so I'm gonna just, I'm, they're going to remember me and ruin the day they brought me in their boardroom. <laughs> and that's what I did. And um, I remember I like drank the producer's coke and like jumped over their table, screwed up their whole boardroom. Uh, and they're like, 
<laughs> so that was the first time. So Jonathan Zafor said, um, look, if, if we do not, I mean, normally actors here, don't call us, we'll call you. And Jonathan literally said, um, if we don't call you, call us, uh, which I had never heard before. And they said, they, they called me up and they said, come down tomorrow and have your call back with Paul Schreier. So um, I went down there and Paul was on the set uh, at the juice bar. He was in his bulk costume. Um, I don't think he was up in the ponytail. I don't remember, quite frankly. I think he decided that two days later. I don't remember exactly. Um, so he was in costume. I didn't realize it was in costume. Like, this guy looks like a prick. <laughs> I'm sorry, he looked at me and was like, what's wrong with that guy? His excuse was he was in wardrobe. My excuse was, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Um, and he read over my, my, my resume and knew that I had done theater. Paul had a theater background. Too. So we literally, you know, just literally got to work. Hey, let's give it a shot. Let's 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 work it through. We worked it through for a couple of hours. And at one point, Paul turns to me and says, "Don't look now." No, we didn't, because you know, everyone had left the set. And he's like, "Don't look now," but all the suits are looking at us. And everyone was gathered around. There was like five women. I don't even remember who they were watching us work. It wasn't a, a, a it was not the camera interview. It was watching us. Uh, and that's how I got the part. And I'll go back even further. Um, this is, <laughs> you asked about which Rachel was the best looking. I said David Yost. I was up for Billy originally. <laughs> and I didn't know him. Um, wow. Six months before, I had gone out on a casting call called Phantoms. That's all it was called, Phantoms. And I went there. Um, I did my shot. Hi, my name is Jason Arvin. I'm with Kelvin Arletta Agency. Thank you. Next. <laughs> That, that was it. Well, David was at the same casting call. I mean, I don't look like David. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Try to look like David. Square jaw, beautiful, and all that stuff. Not me. Uh, so what happened was they took my name and they put it on file. Okay. They took my picture and put it on file. And they decided they were going to get rid of Bobby, who was playing the original Skull. They, they said, dude, we got to do this quick because we're going to shoot in five days. And they went back to that pile of rejects. <laughs> and I'm a reject. Um, and they went, uh, no, yes, no, 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 yes, no, yes, 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 no. Call these people right now. So that goes to show you between the work ethic working with Paul Schreier and the absolute yes, no, which one is already going to go yes. It shows you how it is, you know, opportunity, 50%, you know, dumb freaking luck, and 50% just being prepared when that dumb luck falls in your lap, you know. My life would have been different. It's so much better. We'll <laughs> <laughs> be back. Hey, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say I saw you guys over in the room earlier today, and I'm uh, definitely going to see you guys come back with a huge chunk of my childhood. So I want to say thank you for that. Oh, you're probably welcome for taking your childhood. Looking back yeah. to the first season, um, is there anything you would have done Yeah, um, more auditions on our, on our off time, um, <laughs> <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, we were enjoying being working actors. Uh, and to us, that was the pinnacle. You wanted to be a working actor. And there we were. Um, I think I want to push my agent to find more stuff. Um, on the set, no, we worked our asses off because we didn't have job security. We did exactly what we should have done. I mean, fortunately, Polly and I saw the world the same way. We did not take it for granted that we had gotten on the show, um, uh, that we were indispensable, or that we had to stick to the script. We decided to write our own script by what they gave us. And so we just worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked our asses off until we made ourselves indispensable, you know. Which also, by the way, Paulie would never say this. This is what makes Paulie great at everything he does. He just he will take the, the, the crappiest of crap jobs, tasks, whatever, and just say, this is where I start. And he will pull himself up through, from bootstraps just by his sheer hard work because he has faith and he has talent. And all he's got to do is work hard enough for that talent to be shown. Don't tell him I said that, though. Um, on the record, I think he's a freaking lazy. <laughs> Time we're doing. Yeah. Uh, anything you wanted to do, but they said they, they don't have the budget for it. Everything. I mean, we wanted everything. They, they had the budget for nothing. We literally had a producer once to tell us, I do not have the budget for myself. <laughs> what? What? So apparently the producers weren't getting paid that first year. No, they were. They were. Uh, that was a good joke, but they said that they were. Next. Oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> back there. And then we'll hit you. 
My favorite color? Is black a color? Black. black. Yeah. Yeah. It's a ranger, it's a black. It's pancakes colored. and waffles. Uh, pancakes and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Yeah. yeah. So I'll take yes. What is your best and worst family? Best and worst? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the ones that stick in my in my head are the earliest ones. Paulie and I um, were in, in uh, New York the first time in our lives um, for uh, a, the rap party for the movie. For whatever reason, they had it in Manhattan. We lived in Los Angeles and had just flown back from Australia. Go figure that one. Um, and we decided, again being stupid, we said, "Hey, let's go see the Statue of Liberty." <laughs> so we went out on a boat to go see the Statue of Liberty in February, which it went from from uh, New York. Yeah. Good idea or bad idea? Thank you. So we're out there. Iconic idea. Ridiculous. But as we're getting off, we got trapped on the bow of the ship by people taking pictures. And there was these two girls who were waiting. Uh, they, they were um, they were clearly um, Asian descent. We didn't realize they were like from Japan. Japan. Um, so they, they were like waiting back. They took our pictures as we're stuck on the bow of the ship, and we have to get. Midtown and it's rush hour, we have to go through Wall Street, and these girls are waiting in the back, and they finally come up and they just hand us their, their autograph book. And we're like, okay, what's your name? And they go, <laughs> how do you spell that? <laughs> and Paul looks at me and goes, you don't understand a damn word I'm saying to you. And they're like, <laughs> he's like, you don't know who the hell we are, do you? And they're like, he's like, let's just do it because everyone hears the damn, okay, go, bye. <laughs> that, was, that was probably one of the best. I love that one. Um, I can't remember who Oh, Hanson! You remember the group Hanson from the 90s? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know this. There was a girl who was staying at the, at, at the hotel with us that we became uh, friends and close with. Um, and <laughs> we, uh, we got in an elevator and these three kids come running in the elevator with their stupid long hair. And we're like, what the hell? The kid, and then I get off the elevator and I'm like, what the hell is with those kids? And she's like, I'm a dog! I was Hanson! So Hanson was geeking out on us. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, dude. I'm totally sorry. Silver chair. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah! Silver chair actually, they actually had talent, those kids did. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> Anyway, next. When you had to shave your head for, I believe it was when you were in the police academy, yes. how did you feel? Oh, that was hysterical. I hated it. Because I had just become single, you know, when you're 21 years old and you hate to be bald and not already not getting any. You know you're not getting any. <laughs> but so I'm like, what, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? And at first we thought it was funny. And I thought they were going to give me like a flat top. I'm like, I can do a flat top. That'd be kind of cool. When they told me they were going to completely buzz it off, I'm like, ah! I like went up to the producer's office. I'm like, Tom, are you kidding me? I'm just a bad guy. I'm afraid to be celibate. <laughs> so when they finally did it, I wish, I wish, I wish there are, I know there's some outtakes from that, but Paulie and I, it was the funniest moment we ever had, I think, because Paulie and I, they, they really didn't shave us, and then really had us look at each other, and we'd go, we look at each other, and we go, you know, we get done, and we look at each other, and go, and look how ugly that guy is, and we look in the mirror and go, ah, and that's look at them, and I, I look at Paulie, and he looks at me, and he screams because he realizes how ugly I am, and I realize how ugly he is. But that was the gig. That was how they had it scripted. It was, ah! <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but because Paulie was so ugly, and I was so ugly, Paulie really turned like this. <laughs> we couldn't get through it because we just thought each other was so freaking ugly. <laughs> You know, we were looking, uh, we, there was many times we went into many things, okay, many things came on to us many times. Um, frequently when we were sick, we, we didn't, you can't have a day off, day off, come on dude. Um, and I remember a few times having a film while sick, Polly did this also, and ha there was one time, I think it was the first season or second season, in, in the winter time, and just, contrary to popular belief, it still does get cold in California um, in the winter time, I mean, not in the 20s, but still upper 40s and overcast, it's cold when you have to jump into a lake. And you're sick. 
with a fever. So that would have to be the worst. Best, uh, anytime we just laughed our ass. I mean, they're always great. You know, anytime we had the full cast on, it was kind of fun because it was it was kind of you know, the family coming together along with the drunk weird uncles. You know, <laughs> being there too, you know. Jason Frank. Uh, we keep talking about Jason Frank. Jason Frank is is. I love that guy. He's so he's he's hilarious. He's fun to be with. Uh, we used to screw around together. Every time he does a panel, he tends to call me when he's on a panel. Um, because we really want friends. We want to call Frank. He may not answer because he'll no he'll answer. Okay. Uh, Johnny Bosch too. Uh, Johnny and I became like really close friends to the point that when I went to college and he didn't hear from me for a little bit. He's like, what the happened to you? <laughs> um, let's see, Frank, 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 where is he? Oh, Frank, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right, we'll call it Jason Frank. I'm next to the line. You guys are enthralled. <laughs> So they're like, okay, it's not the best thing in the world for your son to want to be an actor. <laughs> okay, fine. So when I actually got it, they were ecstatic. It was the only thing that I really wanted to do that I was actually good at. Uh, and in some ways, they were like, of course, that was going to happen. Uh, they breathed a huge sigh of relief that it was that instead of jail. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Next! Who's your least favorite ranger to work with on set? Least favorite? Oh, I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that one. I'm not touching that one. 20 foot pole. Uh, yeah. 